what happened for me when I was first diagnosed is that I was, I think, naturally just consumed by the whole concept of having breast cancer and wanting to figure out how I was going to make sure that I lived. And sex was just not in that picture for me. And I, I know that it was frustrating for my husband. We talked about it. And at, in the beginning, in the very beginning, he was sort of in that same mode. Uh, but as we got you know, farther and farther, further and further into my treatment, um, he started to miss sexual relations. And we talked about it because it was something that was bothering him. And I just had to tell him that I just wasn't interested. I mean, I wasn't interested in, in sex for me. I wasn't interested in sex for him. I was pretty much just all consumed in trying to deal with getting better. But it was, it was strange because I sort of felt like I was um, starting all over. Like I had to learn myself again, who I was, and had to learn to get back my own self-confidence in terms of my sexuality. Um, the fact that I didn't have a breast was not a, con was not a problem for me. And um, very fortunately for me, it wasn't a problem for him. There are a lot of cultural reasons why it's difficult to uh, educate Asian communities about cancer. Aside from the fact that everybody is at risk for getting breast cancer, there are some cancers that Asians have the highest rates of, and those are stomach cancer, liver cancer. Uh, liver cancer, one of the main reasons people get liver cancer is because of hepatitis B. and Asian immigrants have the highest rates of hepatitis B infection in the world. Um, and all you need to do is get a vaccination for it, but not enough people are getting that vaccination. Most of the symptoms that I had that led up to my diagnosis went away, except for the pain. And within a month of all of that pain starting, it centered in my lumbar spinal area, which is where they did the radiation, and it never went away. So the day that I met my pain specialist, Dr. Wallace, was finally the day where I started to feel like there was some hope again in my life, because I, my quality of life was zero. I mean, I actually told my husband that we needed to start looking for Dr. Kevorkian, and I was absolutely serious. And I was at the point where I was ready to quit all my treatment, and because it was had no quality of life. I continue to be treated for pain. I've been through four different clinical trials. I've probably been on 20 or 30 different kind of pain regimen. I have a very stubborn pain condition. Um, we don't know why it's continuing. Uh, it's the only thing, it's the lasting legacy of my recurrence. My name is Susan. I was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1991. I had a recurrence in 1997, and I was diagnosed with a second primary breast cancer in 2001.